Yeah, it's time for a brisket. This is sort of your Christmas brisket. And I'm gonna do something a little different with this one. I'm gonna be smoking it up out on the Lone Star Grill's offset. But, and this is in answer to a lot of questions I've had from people, I'm not gonna be finishing it there. We're gonna be taking it when it's time to wrap it and bringing it inside into the oven to finish up. Because once it's wrapped, all it needs is heat to continue. You don't have to do it out on the smoker anymore. Now my usual answer when people say, well, why don't you just take it inside all the time when you're at that stage of wrapping it? Well, I like sitting out by the smoker. It's something I really enjoy. So I usually just let it finish up there. But for this one, we're bringing it inside. And this is about a 12 and a half pound brisket. I'm gonna go ahead and trim this up here. I'm not gonna do a lot of talking while I'm trimming. I'm not a brisket trimming expert. I always say there are two people you can go look at to see how to trim a brisket. One is James at Amum and Claimum Smokers. The other is Joe at Smoke and Joe's Pit Barbecue. And also for Joe, he just crossed 100,000 subscribers on his channel. So if you're not a subscriber to Smoke and Joe's Pit Barbecue, head on over there. Same thing with James. Subscribe to those guys. They know what they're doing when we're talking about trimming briskets and stuff. I'm a backyard cook. I can do an okay job. And this is a USDA prime brisket, if I didn't mention that, and I bought it by mistake. I was trying to buy a choice and I grabbed the wrong one. And by the time I was up in line paying for things, I didn't even notice. I just paid my bill because I was buying a bunch of meat, got home, saw that I'd gotten a prime. This part right here, I'd like to get some more of this off, but there's really not a lot there and I don't want to expose meat like I did right there. So we're just gonna get as much as we can of that sort of floppy fat on the top there. It's not really like fat like this, you can see it. It's that almost like a thin skin. It's not really silver skin, it's just not really good for anything. It'll come off once we, you know, cut this up. It won't be a problem at the end, but I like to get it off at the beginning if I can. All these trimmings are good for, you know, if you're grinding meat for burgers, this is good fat to add. If you're making sausage, this can work. So this is looking good. This is trimmed as good as I want to get it. I'm not going to hack at it anymore. It's time to get it seasoned up. And what I'm using today is Jolly Roger Jalapeno Garlic Black Rub. It's a really interesting tasting and looking rub. I haven't used it before. I've just sampled a little bit of the rub itself and I think it's gonna be good on here. Let me turn this over and get the fat side first here. And we're gonna be smoking this up tomorrow, not today if I didn't mention that. This is gonna sit in the refrigerator overnight with the rub on it to really absorb these flavors. I mean, just look at that really unique color on here. I've seen people use this before and it's always looked just really interesting. And I saw some in the local wood supplier that I go to the other day and decided to grab it. Get my edges here. Get this end while it's here. This other side. Get this over to our meat side now. That is definitely a unique looking rub on this brisket. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the refrigerator overnight. I'm just gonna let those flavors soak in. I'm gonna cover it loosely with some plastic wrap just sort of draped over it. And tomorrow, I'll see you out at the Lone Star Grill's offset. All right, the Lone Star Grill's offset is up to temp. I'm going for 250 to 275 today. So we'll adjust vents to keep it in that range. I'm burning hickory and I have about a gallon of water in the cooking chamber. So let's go ahead and get our brisket on. We're going point towards the firebox today. Go ahead and get my temperature probe in here. I think we got a good position. That's showing right around 37 degrees. This is fresh out of the refrigerator. So 
we got a good spot. So let's get this closed up, let it get smoking, and we'll come back probably about two hours and check it. So our brisket's been going for two hours. I've added two splits of wood in that time. I started with two to build a bed of coals. And that's pretty usual for the Lone Star at this temperature range, about one per hour. And these are half splits. I have mine cut in half to fit better in the fire management basket. So let's go ahead and have a look at our brisket and probably spritz it. It's really interesting looking at this because with that black rub on there, this is kind of hard to tell what the bark's gonna look like. Just wanna see how that's feeling. That's feeling pretty good, but definitely time to spritz this. And the spritz I'm using is 50% water, 50% raspberry vinegar. Now, if you can't get raspberry vinegar, just use apple cider vinegar or something like that, or anything you want. All right, I'm gonna close this up and let this keep going. We'll check it in another two hours, or if we hit that stall, probably gonna be somewhere in the 150 to 160 internal range. That's when we're gonna wrap it and take it inside to finish in the oven. So the brisket stalled out at about four and a half hours, just past 150 degrees. Sometimes you'll get that lower, low 150s temperature where it stalls, sometimes higher up in the 160s. I've had this happen before, so it had great color on it. I'm happy with the bark, so that's why I went ahead and wrapped it right then. And after wrapping it, I put it in a foil pan that's resting on a tray in the oven. And in that foil pan, if you saw, I had some crumpled up pieces of foil, and that's just to help lift the brisket off the bottom of the foil pan so that if any juices collect there, hopefully the brisket won't just sit in those. I want to collect those juices. If a bit of it ends up sitting in some juice, it's not going to hurt anything, but it's just an attempt to keep that bark as stable as possible. Now my oven is set for 275 degrees and I'm just going to let this go until we get an internal temperature somewhere between 200 and 205 and then I'll probe it for tenderness. So this is that second part of the brisket cook that could take place out on the smoker in which I usually do it that way, but I've had a lot of questions from people about just finishing it in the oven. And so we're gonna finish this one in the oven today and see how it turns out. And so once we reach that state of tenderness that our brisket is at, I'm gonna cover the foil pan with foil and it's gonna rest for probably 90 minutes to two hours. And then we will cut in and have a taste. All right, we just hit 200 degrees internal in the oven. We were in there for four and a half hours, four hours outside, a total cook time of eight and a half hours right now. So we're gonna get it out, probe it, and if it is tender, we're gonna cover it with foil, like I mentioned, and it's gonna sit for about 90 minutes before we slice in. So let's check our brisket. So I just wanna probe it down in the flat here in a couple spots and then up in the point have to get through the resistance of the paper first. Now that's feeling pretty tender. Let's check our point. That's very tender. All right, I'm gonna get my temperature probe out, cover this with foil, and it's gonna sit for 90 minutes, like I said, and then we will slice in. So after a 90 minute rest, which came after four and a half hours in the oven, which came after four hours in the Lone Star Grills offset. Here is our brisket. Started out at 12 and a half pounds. After some trimming, I'm not sure what it was, but clearly briskets shrink when you cook them, but I'm very, very happy with this bark and the color. That jalapeno garlic black rub is just 
amazing in what it delivered. I mean, it starts out with really dark color and I think that just continued through with this. So let's cut into this. Now let's see, I'm just gonna go straight across the flat right here and I'm gonna show you something that you can do if you didn't already know this, you probably already did, but some people don't know this. Flat can sometimes be dry. You know that if you've done enough briskets, this is an easy way to get a little bit of more juice back into that if you need to when you're serving it. So let's just cut right across here and see how we did. Oh, that looks good. We got a really nice smoke ring there. But let me cut a slice here. Nice and hot Ooh, and very bendy too, which is always nice. Now, if you smoke a brisket or do a brisket on the grill or in the oven, and you're gonna have some juice at the end there that collects in whatever container you have it resting. And I had those foil pans that the wrapped brisket was resting in and some juice collected there. I saved that juice. You've got a mixture of fat and just sort of an au jus there. Get a little brush, get it on your flat piece. That's gonna give you some extra juiciness there to serve it if it ends up being a little dry. This looks really good though and nice and tender pulling apart. Very happy with this. I'm gonna set the rest of the flat aside here and we're gonna cut some point. All right, so to get a good piece of the point here, I'm gonna go ahead and separate the flat and the point. You can just usually run the slicer along. We'll let this piece of flat join the other piece. And here is our point. Let's go ahead and, oh, yeah. Slide this piece over here because we are definitely having a juice lanch. Nice smoke ring on this piece of the point also you can see right there. Now smoke ring honestly doesn't really mean a whole lot. It's just the interaction of combustion gases with the meat proteins. It's, it's not that big a deal, but it looks nice. Let's cut some of this point here. And now let's just dive right into a taste here. I've got a piece of that flat first. Let's go. That's got really nice bark and the flavor in the bark developed from that rub is outstanding. I really like that jalapeno garlic rub. I've seen that before. I've never used it before, but I'm gonna be using it again. Mm. Now a nice piece of our point. Here we go. That just dissolves. That just dissolves. It's fantastic. Oh, so this video was the answer to the question, can you finish the brisket in the oven? Well, logic says you can, and I don't think you lose anything by doing that because this tastes like it spent the entire time on the smoker. Once you wrap it, all you need is heat. You don't need the smoke or the fire. You're just needing heat to finish that tenderizing and cooking process. As I also said earlier, I like staying out by the smoker, so that's how I usually do these. I just sit out there and have a good time while they finish up, but if you wanna bring it inside to finish, no problem with that. The results are amazing.